to 68 win. For the Commodores, it's their first NCAA win since 2013. They will advance to play fifth seeded Baylor at 6 o'clock Eastern time here at Castle Coliseum on Friday. As a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones at this time. When you ask a question, please state your name and media affiliation. If you're joining us on Zoom, raise your hand and we will answer any raised hands in the Zoom. And recording press conferences, video on cell phones or other cameras is prohibited. Uh, we are joined here on the dais by Vanderbilt student athletes Sasha Washington and Jordan Cambridge and head coach Shay Ralph. Coach, welcome back to the NCAA tournaments, and you. we'll turn it to you for an opening statement. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. We got to get back and get some rest. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate Columbia on a great season. Um, I know we are all really excited as coaches um, and teams to be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, so congratulations to them. Second of all, congratulations to my team, my players for grinding it out. We're not just happy to be here. We have a purpose. And today was the first step in that purpose. We prepared all year for this moment. This was our goal from the moment we got together um, in June. And I'm excited for my players that we get to keep dancing. OK, we'll open it up to questions for the student athletes. Right here in front row. Elena Morris, VandySports.com. Jordan, in your last year at Vanderbilt, you made it to your first NCAA tournament. How big was it for you? And how does it feel that you guys won this game? It's been a long time coming. And I've really been waiting for this moment since I got to college. And like I said the other day, it's just, it can't be more special than this, getting this in my final year. And oh my God, I'm getting emotional. I'm sorry. No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, but it's really special and I'm excited for my team and I'm excited for how hard we've worked to get here. All the time and effort that we put in, you know, we're not done yet, obviously, so. I'm excited. I'm excited that in my last year I get to do this. Question here in the front row. Yeah, Aria Gerson, the Tennessean. Sasha, it seems like you were able to find a lot of space in the post. You know, what was it that, that led to your success there? Um, just my teammates trusting me, um, helping me get open, and, and, you know, like getting the ball inside out, outside in, just working it back and forth. Trying to take a question in the Zoom here. Jordan, uh, after that fourth foul, have to come out of the game, I think that was a turning point for your team. It's hard to be in way in those moments. What did you see and how proud did that make you? First of all, it's not my first time being in foul trouble this <laughs> season, so no, but I trust my teammates. And even though I had four, there was no doubt in my mind. I mean, I knew we were gonna win the game. Obviously, you have to adjust um, with me not being out there, but I trust the people that come in for me. And obviously, they handle it. Even when at four, when I came in and got another silly foul and got five and I was done, I still trust my teammates. And I'm going to be on the bench and I'm going to cheer for them. I'm going to try to talk them up from the bench and do as much as I can. But I trust them and they, they did what they needed to do. We'll take a question via Zoom. This is from Gabriella Lewis. Hi, y'all. Uh, Gabriella from The Next. Um, for both of you, Ayana, can you talk about her, her play tonight um, and, and when she hit that dagger three in, in the last two minutes, what was going through your head? Um, let me just say, Ayana Moore is a dog. She is just a phenomenal basketball player. And obviously, she's worked hard to get back to where she is now. Super confident in herself. We're super confident in her. Honestly, there's no shot that she takes that I don't think it's going in. So when she got that big shot, like at the end of the game, before she even caught it, I knew it was going in because I, that's how much confidence I have in her. And every time she steps up for the moment and she's going to knock down the big shot, she's gonna make big plays for us. That's just what she does, because she's a dog. So very, very grateful for her, Ayana. Yeah, I agree. Um, everything that Jordan said, I mean, big time players make big time plays and, and we wouldn't have it any other way with Ayana Moore. I mean, she's a great teammate, great player, great everything. I mean, she helps us so much, and we're so grateful. Additional questions for the student athletes here in the room? 
We have one more Zoom question here. This is from Jen Hatfield. Uh, Jen, you are now unmuted. Thanks. Hi, all. Jen Hadfield from The Next. Um, I just wanted to follow up on Coach's opening statement about how you guys kind of had to, had to grind it out. Um, and, you know, you guys even had to redo that jump ball at the beginning. And, and just curious for, for either of you guys, just can you kind of take me through what it felt like, you know, to play in that game, to, to kind of weather the runs on both sides and, and kind of what it felt like grinding that out? Let's start with Sasha. I mean, this is nothing new for us. I mean, the SEC is so physical. It's something you have to do every night as a grind. So for, for us, this is nothing new. We know we have to play to the end, and, and it's not over until it's over. So I think just knowing that, like, just keep playing, we got us to win. We'll come um, back to Gabrielle. I'm sorry. Oh, um, first, I think everybody that's in this tournament obviously is a really good team, and they earned the right to be here. And it's basketball, so people are going to go on runs, but it's about how we respond to them. So, of course, they're a good team. They're going to go on runs, but so are we. And it's never a point that we're like, oh, my gosh, we're going on a run. It's over. That's not how we think because leading up to this, we've had games where people go on runs and we fight back, and that's what we did, and that's how we came out with the win. Go back to Gabriella on Zoom. You guys ended the SEC season with a tough loss to Florida. You know, how do you have short-term memory after a game like that? And what have the conversations in the last week looked like to kind of reset to, to back to Vanderbilt basketball? Um, it's just a growing moment. I think the biggest thing is having short-term memory so we know it happened. Let's move on because we have bigger things that like are approaching and we have no time to dwell on the past. So just moving forward, taking the things that we did, learning and moving forward and being better. Additional questions for the student athletes. Just a reminder, the Vanderbilt locker room will be open until just before midnight Eastern time. So that locker room will be open for about the next 20 minutes. Uh, you two are dismissed. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. <laughs> open up the floor to questions for Coach Ralph. Front row. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, Shay, um, obviously you have a team full of primarily players who have not played in the NCAA tournament before. How pleased were you with being able to win a close game like that and to weather all the comebacks by Columbia? I, I couldn't be more proud of my team. And, and like these two spoke before, I mean, we, we've had some ebbs and flows all season. You know, we had a really tough stretch there in the SEC. Obviously, in, in the tournament, um, I felt like we were excited, but the moment was really big, and it got a hold of us, and we just weren't able to get out of its grip. And so that opportunity led to us being able to learn a very valuable lesson in a tournament setting where we got the chance now to be in the NCAA tournament and understand what it looks like and feels like to be ready for the moment. You know, and the moment's going to feel different. There's going to be adversity. We faced it all year. We faced it since we've been here um, in a bunch of different forms. So getting them to understand, just like Jordan said, it's not we're not reacting. We're responding. We're going to continue to respond to whatever adversity comes our way. So we represent ourselves, the work that we do, our team, our program, but all, also our university the right way. We're just really excited to uh, not only be here, to be, but to be able to get this first win today was huge for our team, for our program, for the future of our program. Also, just want to say, Jordan Cambridge, as you guys saw a little bit of, of her emotion, she's the heart and soul of this team. So those of you that haven't followed our team, when we got here, that kid had gone through a ton. She's a sixth year senior. Um, she didn't have to play this year. She tore her Achilles last year before the season started, and that could have been it for her. She's got a third degree from Vanderbilt, which I think will serve her well in life. <laughs> But there isn't a better ending for a kid like that. So there isn't anyone that's worked harder, that's put more into this program, that's invested more into Vanderbilt University. And that, I love that our players get to see that because they're seeing what it looks like for hard work and perseverance to pay off. Go right here and then back to. Yeah, we were able to talk to Jordan and Sasha, but can you just talk about how big Ayana Moore was tonight? Ayana Moore. Uh, is, is another player that I'm really excited about for a bunch of different reasons. She also had a major injury last year. She was huge tonight, 
but she's been preparing. Before she went down last year, she was practicing like a pro um, in moments when the lights were on. Like, so she didn't, I don't know that she understood what it was gonna feel like to have the game taken from her. And, and when she got back out on the court, the kid was a different player. She had a different investment in the game. She had a different investment in her teammates. She had a different investment in herself and becoming great. And I think what you're starting to see now is what it looks like when a kid does that. She is a pro, um, but, but she's also only a sophomore in terms of basketball. So the sky's the limit. These moments are huge for their growth. You can't create this in practice. You can't. You can't create a moment like tonight in practice uh, or, or even in your regular season. So this is only going to elevate our team and our players as we move forward, especially Ayana. Yeah, Shay, um, after their conference tournament, Columbia's coach made some comments being a little bit critical of the number of SEC teams that got in. And you obviously said that you were proud to represent this conference. How do you think that SEC play and the grind of that season prepared you guys for what you saw tonight? Well, I think when you think about um, the NCAA tournament, and I've been lucky enough, you know, as a player and a coach, this is my 20th time in the NCAA tournament. So while this is my first time as a head coach, it's certainly not my first rodeo. And I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. And I know when you play in this tournament, you got to come through the SEC. Sometimes multiple times you got to come through the SEC. So what I love about the opportunity that we had today, not only to represent the SEC, but to re represent ourselves, we are the best conference in the country. And the reason that we, we are who we are right now is because we have to grind it out against the best teams in the country day in and day out. Um, so I, I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of the platform that we had to rep represent the SEC, and we're going to keep going now. Let's go to Gabriella on Zoom. Coach, can you speak a little bit to how y'all um, executed the scout and particularly the defensive focus there, um, you know, especially in that first half, just locking them down? Yeah. I didn't think we did so hot the first four minutes there, Gabriella. We gave up a couple of uh, wide open layups, but um, we, we've worked extremely hard on our defense all year. That is where we hang our hat as a team. Um, I feel like on your worst offensive night, because you're going to have days where you just feel like you can't throw it in the ocean, you can always lock up defensively. But that's more of a mindset than anything. So we really instilled that in our players early on. We play a bunch of different defenses. Today we felt like we could switch a lot with them um, and make it difficult for them, especially number 35, Abby Shu, to get her shot off easily. Um, we, we mixed up some switches, but for the most part, I thought we did a pretty great job. They had to, they had to make tough shots. Um, I, I think we could have limited our fouls and done a, gr a much better job on the boards. But um, no matter what, our players know we got to come out and grind it out on the defensive end, get stops and scores. Stops and scores are great looks. Eventually, our offense will come. But usually, easy offense for us is generated by our defense. So scouts look the same pretty much. It just depends on who we're playing. Like tonight, we had a certain scout for their style, but our defense never changes. Our intensity on defense never changes. Our focus on defense never changes. That is who we are. That is how we hang our hat um, as a team. And I was proud from start to finish today. I thought we did a pretty good job. To follow up on that quickly, you know, I think the defense in the SEC is is really something that a lot of teams hold their hat on. Can you yeah. speak to what about the SEC defense is unique and then why it's just such a part of the culture in the conference? Right. I, well, first of all, I think it's a pretty physical league. There's physicality, um, it, and like I said before, it's kind of hard to, to put your finger on it. There's a mindset, and, and uh, you guys heard uh, Jordan describe Ayana as a dog. The SEC has a lot of players and a lot of teams with that dog mentality. There's also um, some pretty incredible players. I'm not really big on how players are ranked, but you're talking about size, athleticism, skill, versatility. So what I love about the SEC is that you're going to see that physical play, but you're also going to see a bunch of different styles of defense. Some people switch a lot. Some people don't. You're going to see some zone. You're going to see some uh, sagging man. So I think that really prepares you. What you are going to see, though, um, on like every cut, every shot, you're going to get punched in the SEC. And that, that helps us grind it out. Today I felt like there were some ticky-tack calls. We're going to have to get used to how the game is called in the NCAA tournament, depending on the crew that we have. Um, but, but that's just, we're, we're ready to, to kind of fight through walls because of what we see in the SEC. It is physical, there's size, there's skill, there's versatility. Um, and, you know, like you said, most, most people do hang their hat on defense, but I think that's why we were ready today. 
Additional questions for Coach Ralph in the back. Hey, Coach. Josh Collier of 3304 Sports here. Um, first off, congrats on the win today. Thank you. You all have Baylor coming up on Friday. How do you guys plan to prepare uh, to face a team of Baylor's caliber heading into your first NCAA tournament appearance since 2014? Uh, we don't prepare any differently. Um, so we, that's one of the things that I've talked about with our team. It is special to be in the tournament, but our preparation is going to be exactly the same. I don't want them to feel like this game um, is any different than the games that we had in the beginning of the season. Those had to be just as important because if we didn't do a good job preparing for those, we wouldn't be here. You know, so this game coming up, they're Baylor. That's fine. We're Vanderbilt. You know, we're Vanderbilt. They got to prepare for us too. So we're going to pr prepare for every, you know, every single time like we do, day in and day out, day before the game. We got to get rest. That's important. We'll scout. We'll get through our practice tomorrow. We'll go through our shoot around, and then we'll roll the ball out and see what happens. Last question to David here in the front. Hey, hey, hey Coach. David Cunningham, Tech Sideline. Um, I'm curious. You touched on it a little bit. In your experience, what does a win in the NCAA tournament do for confidence, for momentum, and maybe not just this week or, or this season, mm -hmm. but in the big picture going forward that you can recruit to, you have that postseason win under your belt. What, what does it do for you guys going forward as a program? I think it uh, – I know that it shows people that we mean business. We came here as a staff. I came here as a head coach um, behind an incredible administration and athletic director who's sitting right behind you because we had a similar vision in competing for championships and from maximizing the full potential of our student athletes on and off the floor. Vanderbilt's unique because you can do that. We have a world-class university, and we are on our way to having a world-class women's basketball program. So when you come here, you don't have, there isn't anything you have to give up. You can have it all. And so I think what this shows is in our third year as a staff, we are moving in, in the right direction quickly. And you're going to want to get on this train. You're going to want to get on this train because we're going somewhere really special. It's going to be fun. We have a great time. We're a family. But when it's time to work, we work. And hopefully that's what people see. All right, Coach, it's late. Go enjoy a bite. Go Thank enjoy you. some rest. And we'll I appreciate see you, back you guys. Here tomorrow. Thank you so much. Vanderbilt head coach Shea Ralph as the Commodores advance with a 72-68 victory over Columbia. This press conference and all press conferences in the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Columbia is up next. Reminder that Vanderbilt's locker room is open for about the next 10 minutes.
Let's welcome in the 12th seed uh, Columbia Lions. Joining us on the days, Kitty Henderson with a 20-point game, senior Abby Shu and head coach Megan Griffith. Uh, coach, we'll open it up to you for an opening statement. Well, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to our fan base. I thought we had phenomenal people in the stands today from our administration to our families to just random people to the Ivy League administration. Um, you know, I just want to, I'm really grateful that we have so much support. Uh, there was so much blue in this gym that really made my heart full um, battling today for you all. And, you know, I don't, I don't think we played that well tonight, unfortunately. And I thought Vanderbilt played well. I thought they, we, they set the tone early for us. You know, I think uh, Shay did a great job with her team. I told her that before the game, told her that after the game. And, you know, again, although it wasn't our best, you know, this is, this is definitely not the last time we'll be in this tournament. I can tell you all that. Uh, you know, it takes time to build something. And like I said before, I think we've done it the right way. And, you know, I know the selection, selection committee made the right decision by putting us in this tournament. So, you know, I am proud we fought hard at the end there, but um, I'll let everybody hear from our players now. So thank you very much. And with that, we'll open it up to questions for the Columbia student athletes. We do have some questions on Zoom, so I'll start with Jen Hatfield. Jen, I'm taking you off mute. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, Abby, Kitty, just for both of you, um, you know, kind of same question I asked you during the Ivy tournament. Just can you walk me through how you're feeling right now? And, and you know, what are you proud of uh, looking at, at what you've done this season as a whole? Let's start with Abby. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, um, like Coach G said, I don't think we played our complete game, but I think something to be proud of is, you know, the, the community that we brought with us. And, um, you know, we, we made it to the tournament. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that the team will be back next year. I mean, we'll learn from this, and we'll be back. Yeah, I mean, just echoing that, I mean, I think I have a lot of gratitude in me right now, um, especially playing alongside Abby and Paige and Nick. Um, but yeah, like Abby said, I mean, um, feeling a little, you know, disappointed in us as I don't think we gave them our best. Um, but yeah, we'll be back, like Abby said. It is for you, you know, uh, you talked yesterday about um, how important it was for you guys to respond well to mistakes. And I know you had some turnovers, but then you also had some big shots down the stretch. Um, can you kind of talk about how you how you felt like you approached that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, I had turnovers that I shouldn't have had, um, but that's where I definitely could have improved. But I think that my teammates had my back in those moments a lot. I mean, I, I know that a lot of those turn into, like, um, baseline out of bounds or other people getting their hands on the balls. So that was really good for my teammates, and I was really proud of them in that moment. Um, but, yeah, I think I did a good job of just keeping my head a couple of times. But, um, like I said, like, that can't happen. No, I'm going to take that one and improve on that. Go to the front row here. Brian Lee, Columbia Daily Spectator. Can both of you guys talk about the resiliency that the team had in terms of fighting till the very end and what role you guys may have had as captains of the team and kind of setting the tone for the other players? Let's start with Kitty. Yeah, I mean, I think we just had to stay together and go back to the game plan. That was what we kept doing. We kept going away from the game plan, throwing easy turnovers like I was doing. Um, so I, it, was, it was super simple, just staying together um, and just fighting till the end. We knew that we could get stop, score, stop. And you just have to go one possession at a time, and I think that's what we were doing. Yeah, basically what Kitty said. I mean, you're always going to get a fight from this team. I think we have some of the toughest players in the country, and um, especially from our, our young kids, the, the maturity they have to not only just play hard all the time, but also think the game. So um, yeah, I'm very excited to see where they go next year. Let's go to Zoom, and we'll go to Rob Brown. Rob, you're off mute. Oh, thanks. Um, Abby, just a question, I guess, you look like you came down hard on that ankle at the end of the third quarter. How are you feeling? And, you know, did that have limits for you for the fourth quarter? I'm fine. I mean, it's part of the game. You're, you tweak your ankles all the time. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine to answer your question. <laughs> thanks. Good. Um, what kind of adjustments? It was a rough ending to the second quarter. What kind of adjustments did you all make at halftime to kind of stem the tide? Yeah, I think we're um, letting our post go one-on-one -on -one with their post a little bit too much and not playing all together on defense. We're a little bit um, in our own heads, in our own matchups instead of playing as a whole unit. And um, yeah, like Kitty said, we're just 
too many easy turnovers on the offensive end that we probably could have limited and um, some easy layups we could have finished. Um, yeah. And, and for Kitty, I guess you, you guys have faced a lot of really good defense this year. What was unique about what Vanderbilt did tonight? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think that their defense is different to what we've seen before. I think they make you um, second guess yourself. And then obviously the press, I mean, it's important that we all want the ball um, and make good decisions. And I think that didn't happen all the time. So, um, yeah. That's it for me. Thanks. Great season. And you did the league proud. So the front row here. Um, Jillian Prenzi with the Columbia Daily Spectator. Um, Abby, as your time at Columbia sort of comes to an end now, uh, today you were able to get the single season leading scorer record. You also got your um, All-American honorable, honorable mention. As you kind of like look back on your time at Columbia, like how do you see your sort of legacy with this program? Yeah, um, I'm sh I always say this. I'm sure I'll look back in like a few weeks. Right now, I'm just kind of like, you know, soaking this moment in with my teammates. Um, you know, looking back at the game and just making sure I'm in this moment with my teammates, enjoying their presence. But uh, I think all my accolades or whatever that you've mentioned is just a reflection of this program, the way Coach G coaches us every single day to make us better players. And the teammates that I'm surrounded with, um, it's, it's ever, like that's all of our accolades. I kind of see it like that. So, yeah. Let's go back to Jen on Zoom. Kitty, for you, you know, I got to fit one more question about you and Fliss in this season. I'm just curious what it's been like, uh, you know, sharing this NCAA tournament experience with her and, you know, playing playing alongside her today on the stage. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm definitely a proud big sister for sure. Um, I love playing with Fliss. She's extremely smart. Um, and we're very lucky that we have players like that, fresh, all the freshmen, to be honest, coming back next year. Um, I think we have a really bright future and I'm, I'm very grateful that I get to play with my sister every day. Thank you both for your time all season. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jen. Additional questions for the Columbia student athletes? Thank you for your time. Safe travels back to New York. Uh, just a reminder, the Columbia locker room is open until 12.15. 12.15 for the Columbia locker room. We'll now open up the floor to questions for Coach Griffith. And we'll go to the second row. Coach, your play oh sorry, Phoebe Winters for Hokey Haven. Uh, your players talked a little bit about the resiliency, but your team was able to come back from a 10-point deficit and bring it to a two-point deficit twice in this game. What does that say about the team's mentality and their grit? Well, that is, is definitely something that I can say if you've watched us play before, which I'm not sure if you have or not, Phoebe, but uh, we don't give up, and um, I think that's a reflection of my staff. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by four incredibly strong coaches, you know, um, women in our staff, and I think they're great role models for our players, and, and that's not to shy on, on the men on our staff at all, but, you know, I, I would just say they model, my staff models the behavior that we want our players to have every day, and I think our players go out there and they've emulated that. You know, that's when you, you know, culture's in a good place is when they're breeding that within themselves, and. Um, and modeling it for each other. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised that we did that. You know, unfortunately, we had a really bad second quarter, and that, that's kind of what did us in there. We'll go to Rob on Zoom. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Um, I guess for the, for, the, for the team, is that the key? Like big takeaway that in a game like this, in a tournament like this, just a five minute stretch is, is enough to make a, an insurmountable situation? No, I, that, I don't think it was insurmountable, right? To bring it within two and yeah. to be in those positions. You know, if it was insurmountable, I don't think we would have brought it back to that, that <laughs> closeness. Um, it was just about finishing those plays, making plays. You know, I think in that second quarter, we, um, you know, to, I think it was Kitty that said this, or Abby, I can't remember now, but um, to let Sasha Washington get just really comfortable uh, was hard for us. You know, she, she had a monster game, you know, 16 points, 15 boards. She had four offensive rebounds, I think, in the first quarter. Uh, so, you know, that's, that was tough. That was, that was a tone setter. And then, you know, we were throwing the ball around the gym early in that game, which also got Vanderbilt to feel really comfortable with their pressure. Um, you know, I think that, that rattled us. So I don't think it was insurmountable. I kind of talked around a little bit there, but it definitely um, set a tone for the rest of the game. 
and then we were able to throw some punches in that second half, and we just couldn't deliver that last one. Yeah, my, probably a bad choice of word on my, on my end. Um, I know Abby was saying that that's kind of like a normal tweak of an ankle, and it happens, but, you know, it seemed like she wasn't able to get the ball off as easily in the fourth quarter. Was that a problem um, heading into the late part of the game? No, you know, I, I mean, I, I love Abby more than anybody probably in this world other than her mother, but I don't think she played well tonight, you know, and I, I, we talked about that. I said to her, I'm like, hey, and it's not a knock to her at all. Like, we all have games, right? I think, did she play fine? Yeah, she played fine tonight, but I think she knows it. She was the first person to admit it. Um, you know, she, she went two for 11 from three. She had some great looks that she usually hits, you know, coming off a long weekend, um, you know, and I think, you know, I wish, I think that she wished she could have taken some of those plays back. But here we are, you know, you got to make your free throws down the stretch, all of us. Um, you know, we went 17 for 23. It's a four point game, right? That's tough. That's a tough one to swallow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think she was fine after that. Like she said, you roll your ankle every other day. You know, she's, she's a pretty sturdy kid. So I don't think that had anything to do with it. Yeah, last one for me. I, I know after Saturday night's game, it was. The comment that, that Kitty Abby and you made was, was you weren't playing Columbia basketball and that really upset all of you. I mean, I know the, the results certainly weren't there tonight, but do you at least feel a little bit better about the performance compared to that evening? Oh, <laughs> that's a tough question. Very different game. Very, very different game. I think for about 25 minutes, maybe, I'll say that we played Columbia basketball tonight. Uh, that second quarter just sticks out like a sore thumb in my mind right now, so... Uh, I thought was a really rough stretch for us, but I do think that they did play with toughness and grit tonight and a resilience that I did not see on, sa on Saturday. Thanks for everything, Coach. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Let's go to Jen on Zoom. Hey, Meg, a couple questions for you. Um, if I can start with the last three seconds of the game, so CC hits the jumper to, to bring you guys within two, and then you call timeout. Um, can you walk me through kind of what you're thinking there, why you burned the time out there? Yeah, well, I'll take complete ownership of it. I wish I didn't do that now. <laughs> but uh, in the moment, I wanted to set up pressure and make sure that we were ready because, you know, in that situation, um, you know, whether she, you know, obviously she could call a timeout and advance it, but I just wanted to make sure that we were organized as much as possible. Um, and I just felt like at that point it was really critical for our team to, to get organized on both sides of the ball. And then, you know, can you just talk about it? I, I asked Kitty kind of about her performance, but, you know, 20 points, I think it was seven boards. Um, just what you saw from her and from Pliss as well tonight. Yeah, I, you know, I think the world, I thought everybody that was watching this game saw how good Fliss Henderson is. You know, when, I, when she came to Columbia and we got to see her, you know, this fall for the first time in the flesh with our team, uh, it was no surprise that, you know, she's so smart. She plays so smart. She's tough. Unfortunately, she got into foul trouble today. But if you look at the stat sheet, she was plus eight in 23 minutes. And um, she's a force to be reckoned with. She's smart. She can score. She's tough. She can defend. I mean, she does a lot of the great things for us. And she's going to have a bright, bright, a very bright future here at Columbia. Um, you know, and then Kitty is just, I mean, tough in a very different way. They're, they're a dynamic duo to have together. Um, but Kitty would just lay everything out for her, uh, our team. And she plays so dang hard all the time. Um, and she's just so fun to coach. And you know, I think as Kitty's going to learn a lot from this, I think she's going to take the space that Abby left for us in this program um, and, become, and become the player that we needed to be and the leader we needed to be next year. You led me right into my last one, which is, you know, I believe you when you say this is kind of the appetizer, right? And, and you're going to yeah. be back. And, and but, but at the same time, people can look at this and say, well, you're graduating the best pr player in program history. So can you talk a little bit more about how you see this um, kind of sustaining, you know, as you talked about the past couple of days? Jen, it's, it's almost like we talk every week. I, I think <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. So <laughs> this is what I'll say. You know, this is, this is the cycle and this is the mortality of college sports is you graduate. Right, you graduate great players and you coach great players. And Abby is a great player in college basketball. I'm so happy that she got to play on this stage. She's going to go have a long pro career wherever she is. I hope she gets drafted high. Um, you know, and, and she did so much for this program. She left the jersey in a better place. That's all we can ask our players to do. All three of those seniors did: Nicole Stevens, Paige Lauder, Abby Shue. But you know, just like last year when we graduated seven seniors and lost all of our scoring and rebounding, everybody said, "Meg, how are you going to do it?" And I just said, "We're going to do it." So I have a phenomenal staff. 
we recruit uh, with the best of them and we make sure that we develop our players. And I can tell you that we're going to develop every single one of those players that's sitting in that locker room right now. And we're going to go out and get some great players as well to play alongside them. Awesome. Thanks for making time for us every week. Absolutely. Love to do it. <laughs> Coach, in the last press conference, uh, Coach Ralph talked about you, you go through the SEC to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, you went toe to toe with an SEC mm -hmm. team tonight. Didn't go the way you wanted to. Uh, what does that say about the quality of mid-majors, quality of the Ivy League to, to get to this stage, have this type of opportunity going forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just really proud of, of our league, you know, right now. I'm, you know, I know Princeton's got a big matchup this weekend, too, and to have both of us in the tournament um, with a lot of hungry teams in our league. You know, there's only eight of us, but I can tell you that um, we've got great coaches. There's a lot of great players in our league. And there's a lot of there's a lot of mid other mid major conferences that can say the same thing and and for us to be able to show that tonight um, you know I have great respect for Shea and vice versa and uh, you know I'm not surprised we went toe to toe tonight you know I told everybody that last weekend when I believed that we should be in the tournament um, and, and you know I, again I'm, I was happy that we did that and we like I said we battled but it wasn't our best and I know we will bring our best the next time we are in this tournament. Any additional questions for Coach Griffith? All right, Coach, thank you for your time. Safe travels back to New York. Thank you so much. Once again, the Columbia locker room will be open for the next eight minutes. Uh